Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Mojo Rising, How to Make Cancer Suck Less. And this is a really exciting episode because this week we're going to be sharing exactly how our holistic palliative care strategy builder came to be. So this is the fruition of something that is going to change the world. And we couldn't be more excited to share this with you. So before we get started, we'd like to just say a little hello to our dear Oscar Sierra. So anything you'd like to share, Oscar? Hey, Julie, this is the fruit of our labors for the last many, many months. So yeah, we've been working on this for, for a minute. And I think it's really cool that um, the story I'm about to tell you, it's almost like we birthed the baby because it took me nine months to heal from cancer. And it's taken us nine months to develop the strategy builder. So it is truly um, our gift as a result of this process. So we're really excited to get started. But we're going to take you, we're going to start this story or podcast by sharing, kind of, we're going to start in the middle of the story, which is a moment last January. It was actually just about a year ago right now. I was sitting, if you can imagine, I was in a hard rock. Um, uh, you know, a, a beautiful resort. It was an all-inclusive. It was in listening to my very favorite band. It was perfect weather outside. And I was surrounded by my very favorite people. And they were listen, They were playing a song called Good People. And in the middle of Good People, I turned around to someone that I greatly respect and deeply love and care about and who's just a really awesome human being and said, hey, I think I can start a company and change the world. I think I can be a CEO and teach people the formula of how I saved my life. And he kind of said, and he's like, dude, if anyone can do it, you can do it. So let's see what you can do. And I quickly turned around and said to the person I was standing next to, who was a woman named, by the name of Katie Mathis and said, Katie, I, I think I just figured out the formula for how I can change cancer care. Like I, Oscar taught me what I needed to know. And now I can create a formula about this. So I think I need to do this. And she laughed and she's like, well, let's do it. And she's now the chief design officer of Mojo Health. So this, it was just about a year ago that this idea was just a twinkle in my eye and it took me a couple months until I was actually declared cancer free to begin to do this. But I, you know, today is really the very first deliverable from that moment um, that we think will really change the world. So um, I know I speak for myself and Oscar and all of the Mojo team when I say uh, this is going to be a really good story. So can I say something real quick about that that I just now realized? So yeah. you you created a micro environment, if you will, or an environment even of yeses. So the the, the idea was born in your head. But your feet were in the sand. You're in Mexico. The weather's perfect. The music is right. I mean, all this is ambient and 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 then additionally reinforced by the first two people that you said this idea to said yes. So this is a testament to how you can create your reality, especially if you set the tone with, you know, the music, the food, the smells, the feet in the sand, the friends around you. So this mojo started, I guess that was really the, this was the initiation, uh, really the, the engendering of mojo was it, I guess was on the beach there, wasn't it? I would say for sure. Mex mojo started in Mexico. That's for sure. Not only because that's just like me, that's what I was going to say. Not only because that's where <laughs> I was at the beginning, but that's because our, you know, you were born. So we certainly have our roots in Mexico and have a deep appreciation for, uh, Mojo being, you know, we will celebrate Cinco de Mayo, that's for sure. But so let's share with a little bit for those of you who it's been a minute since you've listened to our first podcast, or maybe you're, you're tuning in for the first time, um, would love to share a little bit about my story just to begin. Uh, and for those of you that are on YouTube, you'll be able to see a visual right now. And can you see my strategy? Yeah. Online? Okay, perfect. So of course, um, for those of you, just to remind you, it was June of night of 2022 where I was I was diagnosed with cancer. Um, in July of 2022, I had to have some emergency surgery. I had about a foot of my colon, 61 lymph nodes, my appendix removed. From that, we found out that the cancer had spread. Um, they suggested I started chemotherapy. They suggested I did six months of chemotherapy and then was going to do a PET scan. And that was the moment I broke and decided I wasn't going to do a pure conventional approach. I met uh, the dear Oscar Sierra um, in late uh, late July of 2022. And he immediately shared with me a couple of really exciting things that we'll come back to. But the first thing is how to predict treatment efficacy. The second thing he did was how I could build my body up so that I could ride the wave of treatment 
and feel just fine. Because he asked me in that very early session, Julie, what are you afraid of? And I said, I'm afraid that I'm going to do this and it's not going to work and I'm not going to know. And he was able to, to conquer that fear for me. But the second thing he was able to do is really build my body up so that I could really withstand everything and felt better than I'd ever felt before. So during treatment, you can see I started my chemotherapy in September, um, had a really hard time with that because I, in my heart, I knew chemotherapy wasn't the right medicine. So we were tracking data outside of chemotherapy. Uh, by the second um, it, chemotherapy and session is what chemotherapy session is when I started my uh, theme parties. And that was my first theme party of a luau. But it was then that we realized that the chemotherapy wasn't working by pulling a couple of different blood markers, starting with CA199, then moving to CTDNA, and was able to convince my oncologist to pull some additional data. He did a PET scan and realized the cancer was all over my body and inoperable. That's when I was moved to stage four officially. So I began immunotherapy in November. Um, as I mentioned, um, uh, January, I was sitting at the end of January, I was sitting in the beach in Mexico and realized that I could create a formula to help other people have the same experience because I knew from all the leading indicator data, I was cancer free. And that was officially confirmed at the end of February with my next PET scan. So I had a truly incredible cancer story, nine months end to end. And you can see um, the entire time I was able to truly live my best life. I was able to work the entire time feeling good perhaps taking some extra naps. I'm not saying I wasn't, you know, 100% the same, but I certainly could live a very good life and will continue to live a very great life. The other part to understand is I had a 14% chance of survival and I'm now cancer free and the likelihood of recurrence is very small. So I'm in a really, really great position after nine months, all because of Oscar Sierra. So Oscar, let me just say one more time publicly. Thank you. Man, I couldn't have chosen to do this with a more driven person than you. And this is the fruit of all of my knowledge and your initiative and determination, this strategy bill that you're about to talk about. So that's exactly right. So, you know, when I was, it, you know, December, January, February, realizing I was cancer free, you know, most people would be ecstatic. And, but I would wake up in the middle of the night crying because I realized I was able to do this because I, frankly, I could throw all of my expendable income at this. I, I'm not married. I don't have kids. I have a great job. I have a, you know, a wonderful community. And so I was able to spend all of my time, six months, researching options and considering things and building a holistic strategy. But the single mom who had cancer would die because if I would have listened to what that first oncologist would have told me, I also would have died. So I un really understood that I had a second chance of life and needed to use that to help good. But what, what you didn't know is what your oncologist doesn't actually understand. And so I dug into really understanding the toolboxes and, and your doctor is, a, is an expert and we say there's six toolboxes. So Oscar, do you want to quickly just do a, an overview of the six toolboxes for our listeners? Yeah. Pharmaceutical is a toolbox that their oncologists are most familiar with, you know, chemotherapy or, uh, you know, TKI inhibitors, all the different flavors of drugs that do stuff in your body and all drugs have side effects. And hopefully effects as well that you want. Uh, the second toolbox is botanical, you know, plants, and I'll loosely throw in mushrooms in there as well, even though technically speaking, they're not botanicals, but kind of like, you know, tomatoes are vegetables, but they're fruits. Anyway, I'll shut up now. Uh, let's not geek out there. Uh, so pharmaceutical, botanical, nutraceutical. So vitamin C is not a plant. Uh, alpha lipoic acid is not a plant. You know, fish oil is not really fish. It's a nutraceutical. Uh, so pharmaceutical, botanical, nutraceutical diet. So there are dietary interventions and there are lifestyle interventions like jumping up and down, doing yoga. Uh, and then there are, you know, therapeutic interventions like reflexology or, um, uh, you know, meditation, um, you know, track and field, playing saxophone, whatever, whatever makes your heart sing and, and helps you find your flow. So these are things that are not pharmaceutical diet, lifestyle, nutraceutical, botanical things. So those are the six toolboxes. So that's exactly right. So what I realized, you know, part of my approach was really to bring these six toolboxes together to work in concert. And it was really my job to be the conductor, to understand how I could play different parts of the toolboxes at different parts of my journey to really maximize that outcome. But it took me a lot of money and time to build this. So let me just be honest. I mean, I was seeing different practitioners all the time and trying to figure things out and watching YouTubes and reading books and talking to Oscar, using the best of all my leaders and, 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 and my coaches and my healthcare team. But it took a lot of time and effort. 
And what we wanted to do was create healthcare equity. And we know we could do that by building this tool. So it didn't matter if you were in the middle of Iowa or Alabama, if you lived in New York City, you could really understand all the different ways that you could heal outside of that pharmaceutical toolbox. So this is designed to be used in concert with other methodologies that you know and well, or that you your insurance will pay for, that you have access to locally. This is really designed to, to stretch your mind and help you understand what else you have to learn. So Oscar, let's talk a little bit about the process. So certainly we sat down, I mean, over months and months and months, and we're researching and listing things. But, you know, let's talk a little bit about the your knowledge base and where your brain came from, because since so much of this came from, from your professional expertise. Yeah, so people come to me with problems that I have a knack to kind of uh, dissect and look at it from the lens of Chinese medicine or traditional medicine that dates back thousands of years and low-tech assessments like pulse and tongue, as well as high-tech assessments in the world of functional medicine and holistic oncology, genetics and genomics, which are concepts that are more recent, but nonetheless help uh, look at a situation through different lenses that produce more data. With that data, we then decide which of the many foods or diets, you know, which of the many herbs or formulas, you know, which of the many nutraceuticals would be best suited for a particular case. So you have to first gather data, be to date G, and then, you know, dial in, you know, any anyone can take, you know, apple cider vinegar and it's not going to kill anyone probably, but, you know, who is that the most beneficial for, you know, when is it really indispensable? And what are the data points that we use to determine that X intervention within the six toolboxes is going to provide the most bang for their buck energetically or financially with dollars and cents. And so that's what we do. We basically, you know, gather data and then identify and then remeasure, you know, see, well, did this botanical or nutraceutical produce the results that we were looking for? And this is informed, like I said, by traditional medicine that's been around for thousands of years, as well as modern uh, uh, biomedicine. And uh, most of this along the lines of oncology came to me from Donnie Yance as well as some other teachers along the way on the traditional medicine side of things. But uh, Donnie and the ETMS, the Eclectic Triphasic Medical System, is a really nice organized systematic way to identify, you know, what are the data points that we need to look at in particular, because we could just run millions of tests, but, you know, which ones are the most important tests and diagnostics to produce the, the best outcomes in terms of what usually people are looking for is A, overall survival, B, quality of life. Okay. And like, when you think about the types of science that you draw on or the, the historical legacy healing modalities, what are some of those that you really draw on as you put together your knowledge of, 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 of your, your basis of knowledge? Chinese medicine in terms of the um, diagnostics, so pulse and tongue and eyeballs and just asking questions and seeing the yin and the yang and the damp and the dry of things and the hot and the cold, as well as modern functional medicine. So, you know, we will look at biomarkers uh, like inflammatory markers, like C-reactive protein and sed rate and um, markers of optimal nutrition, not just, you know, are you alive, but is your magnesium and zinc in the optimal level that prevents disease and fosters vitality rather than just keeps you alive, maybe not bad enough to have a diagnosable uh, obvious disease. Um, and then toxicity markers, like, you know, what's going on with your phthalate levels or, you know, glyphosate or mycotoxins. So these things are sometimes in the blood, sometimes in the urine, sometimes in the stool, what's going on with the microbiome, you know, because that affects our hormones and the, how we process hormones and foods and toxins. So we can assess these things using high tech ways and low tech ways. So those are some of the, the lenses that I use to assess, to find the best out, the best interventions. All right, Oscar. Okay. So one of the things that people are going to want to understand is where did the knowledge that sits behind the strategy builder come from, builder come from? And I know you have degrees and, and letters after your name and all that fun stuff. But the truth of the matter is, is we know so much your knowledge has come from the people you know, and the conferences you visited from. So talk to us a little bit about the knowledge and experience that went into the knowledge of, of the basis of knowledge that we use to build the strategy builder. So I'll tell you where it doesn't come from, which is a standard of care. So, you know, the, which is just piss poor, honestly. So, you know, I'm informed about the standard of care and then we layer in 
knowledge and wisdom from Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, PubMed articles on a particular herb that may have come from China or India or right there in your backyard here in America. And I get a lot of this stuff from Donnie Yance, which spends about two hours a day for the last 12 years or more gathering information about green tea and cancer, yoga and cancer, this diet and cancer, uh, the latest and greatest drugs. So, you know, we're not against uh, pharmaceuticals. They have great value, as you know. And we figure out how to leverage the ancient knowledge and the best of modern biomedicine such that the outcomes with pharmaceuticals, botanicals, nutraceuticals, diet and lifestyle points us in the right direction. And, and, and we know early on that it is or is not. So it's informed by, you know, I stand on the shoulders of giants, as they say, with guys like Donnie Yance and David Winston and uh, Kenneth Profrock. I've been to dental conferences where I learned about how airway issues really affect uh, oxygenation and hypoxia and inducible factor one. And, you know, hypoxia is this, this thing that happens a lot in the macro and micro environment of cancer. And that's you know, that's how you're sleeping, you know, is your mouth open at night, right? Like that's, that's not really going to be resolved by an herb. It's going to be resolved by you just shutting your cake hole and taping it shut or, you know, clearing up, washing out your sinuses with some chamomile tea or calendula tea, which, you know, herbs can help. So um, it's not all about, you know, sticking needles in people and, uh, and doing an herb. It's about what, how can we get the biggest bang for a buck? And how do we know where to tug on, on that web? as Dr. Ellie Campbell talks about, you know, do we tug on the airway thing or the diet or the lifestyle or, you know, exercise or, uh, you know, spirit connection, anywhere you tug on that web is going to affect all the other things. But, you know, you've got precious time uh, as a, as a clinician to where you can see some really palpable results. So the artistry is knowing, you know, do we tug over here with an herb or over here with, hey, let's do some counseling around your relationship with finances and money or your husband or your mom or whatever. What's going to create the biggest bang for your buck and going to measurably take you in a direction that you want to go? I think that's a really important uh, distinguish, dis distinguishing factor that we want to make for our listeners. And that is, you know, what we're about to build and share with you is really for the general public and for the masses. It's going to give you general information. But when you sit down and meet with an herbalist or spend time with a functional doctor or someone like that, who really will look at a variety of different types of data and pour over your information to help you make decisions and guide and, and really dial it into you, it is a very personalized and very amazing experience. We are not in any way trying to say that that isn't the very best gold standard. What we're trying to do is make this accessible by the masses to understand how they can start, how they can build their strategy, et cetera. But we would encourage each and every one of our listeners to dig in, to gather that additional data and find the expert in their area that can really support. But let's just talk about something that blew my mind in that very first conversation we had, Oscar. And that was when I, you said, what is one of your worries? And I said, that I'll never feel as good as I feel right now. And you said, well, I can build your body up. So what did you mean by that statement? So we were talking about how your doctors said you got to do chemotherapy and and you really weren't super gung-ho about that. But at the same time, you weren't categorically opposed to it. You were willing to go on the offensive, but you were you were concerned about how that would make you feel like crap. And, you know, maybe you wouldn't be able to go on, you know, the concert tours that you wanted to go to probably if if you had some. Uh, insufferable and or permanent side effect from uh, pharmaceutical or conventional medicine intervention. So that's not always the case. Really, side effects are optional, just like heart attacks are optional. If you play your cards right and you look at all the data, just because heart attacks are common and just because side effects are common and side effects are often bad, doesn't mean that you have to subscribe to that story if you play your cards right and get your data right. Again, this is where you look at that whole web of diet, lifestyle, environment, uh, uh, social pieces, um, you know, nutrition pieces, and then you you bolster the body up, you armor up to where the weak points are, so that you don't really have the side effects. So, what how he explained this to me is basically you can prepare your body, so when you take the hit, it doesn't actually make that much of an impact. 
And so one of the ways that you explain this to me in those early days are, listen, if you start off and your magnesium's a four and it goes to a two because of the side effects, you're going to feel that. But if you start off and your magnesium's an eight and you go to a six, that's pretty normal in a given day and you're not really going to feel that much. So the whole idea of this is if you prepare to take the hit, the hit's not really going to hurt you. It's really just going to, you can ride that wave much easier. Well, and we know where these hits are going to be, you know, certain uh, interventions, radiation, surgery, pharmaceuticals, we now know like what, you know, that's rough on the kidneys or it's rough on the heart or it's rough on the liver. So, you know, we don't just send cadets off to Afghanistan and, you know, Ukraine and wherever else, like they got to go through basic training. We're going to, we're going to say, well, you're probably going to hear some gunshots. So let's, let's practice you hearing gunshots. And, you know, you might come across some hand-to-hand -hand combat. So let's train you in Kung Fu before you go out there. So let's spend a couple of weeks training you so that, you know, if and when you get kicked in the shins, that won't be the first time. And you got shin guards, right? Because you're going to be on a soccer field and, you know, we get you geared up, armored up, protected and trained. So this is a kind of a no brainer. You don't just send people off into battle where you know that, that there is harm likely without really gearing them up, armoring them up, protecting them from a mental, spiritual, you know, chemical uh, way. But, you know, we're not just teaching everyone Kung Fu and and uh, all the things. We we know that if if you're going to do a certain drug like cisplatin, it's going to be rough on the kidneys and it's going to lo lower your magnesium. So before, before you do that drug, you measure the magnesium and you say, well, oh, it's great. You know, green light, you're ready to go. Or like it's a little low, let's spend a couple of weeks getting it up so that, like you said, instead of going from a four to a two, you go from an eight to a four, you know, worst case scenario. So I think you just hit on something that I want to make sure we give a very clear answer. When does someone need to begin this? What's the, what's the optimal time to begin this? The, the optimal time is as soon as possible. I mean, I would, uh, you know, one would argue before they get diagnosed with cancer, because the same markers that we use to make sure that someone has a, a, a fares better through chemo are the same markers that prevent cancer in the first place. So, but arguably you say, okay, well, you know, people aren't really going to listen to this podcast, statistically speaking, unless maybe they or their loved one already has cancer, in which case the best time is now, what, whatever that is. If you're halfway through chemo or you're about to start chemo, but the best time is, is basically now, because some of these things take a month to get that armor on, like vitamin D. Like you don't start taking vitamin D, you know, during flu season. You take it two months before flu season because it takes about two months for it to really get into your system. You don't put the 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 storm shutters on your house in Florida during a hurricane. You you put that on ahead of time, right? Like it, it doesn't make any sense to start doing this stuff at the time. Although it's you know something's better than nothing. Some of these things take a day to to get your armor on and some of these things take two months so as soon as possible the end the, the easy answer is just as soon as possible i think you and i think you shared with me early on in my days of like it typically if you start two weeks before you start chemo for the most part your your body's going to be in better shape so i would say if you're you've started everything two weeks before you're probably going to be you know on the better side of things as you said if you started a month before you're going to be even better than that if you yeah. start six weeks before you're going to be even better but two weeks to me is the moment of like make sure your body your your you should be rowing and ready to go into that marathon and ready to do this by two weeks. So make sure you give yourself that 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 amp time. Two weeks is a good round number where you can get most of the things up that need to come up and most of the things down that need to come down. So you have a, a, a green light on something like a surgery or a chemo. You know, like I said, some things like vitamin D take a little longer, but at least in two weeks, they're on their way up to optimal. Okay. And my guess is we're going to have some folks that that listen to this podcast and they probably have already started chemotherapy and already have neuropathy or already have some bleeding and bruising or already have some anemia or things like that. So I think the other piece of advice you just gave is it's never too late to start. It is always the right time to feed your body the fuel your immune system needs to heal. Would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, I see patients that see me years after they did conventional treatment because exactly that, because we're dealing with the neuropathy and the scarring and the fibrosis uh, and the clot risk. And, um, you know, what it's, you know, we can still help them, but they're a little behind the eight ball. It would have, you know, they always say, man, I, I wish I would have talked to you, you know, back when I was going through all this. I'm like, well, you know, now is better than next year. It, you'd be in a worse boat. Perfect. So the best time is now.
I also think the important thing, like another thing I would just mention is, you know, this is somewhat like pain where when you get out of the hospital, you don't necessarily like, I'm willing to take some pain medicine right there because you don't really want to start pain because it's harder to get through to the other side. This is one, like, for example, I um, was worried about neuropathy. The chemotherapy I was on is known to cause neuropathy. And for those of you that aren't aware, neuropathy is one of those side effects that's really hard and well, can be a lifetime of misery. So I really wanted to do everything I could well before I started. And so Oscar pointed out supplements and healers I could talk to and activities I could do. And I was lucky enough that that was never something I had to worry about. But it was that one of those things where you have to pre-plan for this. This is something that takes some action, but it is something that we built, spent our last nine months building so that you could come and build this out in minutes versus the months it took me. Yeah, it's one of these things, a lot of people, I don't know how they use this logic, but they're like, oh, well, I'll do all this stuff for my health and the gym and the spiritual stuff and the acupuncture and the herbs, like after I go through conventional, you know, let me just get through conventional therapy and then I'll dial that in. It's like, no, 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 no. Because you're doing conventional therapy, you need this other stuff even more. I mean, you clearly needed it before because that maybe if you had that stuff in place, you wouldn't have gotten cancer. But now that you have cancer and then on top of that, you're going to do this additional assault of, you know, radiation, chemo, um, you know, surgery, you needed even more. Kind of like when Gandhi reminds me of, you know, when he had a whole lot going on and, um, you know, he was in this daily practice of meditation and they're like, you know, Gandhi, you've got like five meetings today and you got to, you know, weave your, your little robes as well. And like, how are you going to fit all this in your schedule with, you know, you've, you've got an hour meditation in there. Like, you know, do we need to cut back on the meditation? He's like, oh yeah, yeah. Good point. We've got a lot really busy today, really busy schedule. I'm going to need to double my meditation. You know, it's because you're doing this stuff that you need more of, of, you know, the meditation, the herbs and the things to deal with it. It's, it's not like the opposite. So, you know, people really need to kind of get over that cognitive hurdle. I couldn't agree more. And I hear that all the time from people who say, um, oh, well, well, we're going to just start chemo and see how it goes. And I'm thinking to myself, like, so you're going to allow your body to break down before you start to fix it instead of just allowing it to to have a surfboard to ride the wave. Like, it just is insane and nuts to me that it's just backwards thinking. But I was the person who got to go through chemotherapy and didn't have side effects. So, like, you know, I, I overprepared in every way I possibly could because I wanted to so much avoid the the pain and misery of, of cancer. But so let me explain a little bit about what we've done. And this is we went through and you know, every every medicine has side effects. We know that they have side effects. They're planned side effects. The manufacturers talk about their side effects. So I went and researched the side effects from a variety of different perspectives, from the manufacturers, from um, different leading health organizations, from the CDC or from, you know, different places like that to understand, not the CDC, but, um, you know, the American Cancer Society and others to really understand the, op the, the side effects that are likely to occur with any given in chemotherapy. And so we've charted that into the strategy builder. So you can come in and choose the chemotherapy that you're on, and then it will identify the side effects per that chemotherapy that you're likely to face. The next step is per side effect, we've gone through and mapped this to supplements, which are a mix of the botanicals and nutraceuticals. For our purposes, we don't really need, you know, it's not that important for us to separate those two. It's important to have both covered within our supplement strategy. We also have identified the diet or eating habits or environment that is important to help heal this particular side effect. And then last but not least, the facilitated healers that you may want to consider drafting into your team. So Oscar, how did you identify the right supplements per side effect? Yeah. So full disclosure, I didn't do it. This is, this is basically the amalgamate of Zenith of a team of trained physicians herbalists, acupuncturists, naturopaths for the last 20 years that has just empirically found out what works and what doesn't. And I, I know these people personally, mostly through the Donnie Yance, Madiri Medicine, Madiri Academy, ETMS crew, which I've been a, a part of since 2011, since doing the 60 hour in person holistic oncology training with Donnie Yance. And we've been basically, you know, we pay money to be part of this inner circle roundtable where we present cases of cancer cases of all sorts all across the world. And we say what well, works and what doesn't. And, um, and you know, between the collective whole of us, I mean, we've treated hundreds and hundreds of patients. And so this is just, we, we've seen what works and what doesn't by work. I mean, 
no side effects or way less, or we see the side effects coming, you know, when certain things are in place, right? Like when someone's magnesium is already low and then they do a platinum type of drug, like we can predict that, oh, this is going to suck um, more than usual. Or when someone already has, you know, low blood pressure or when someone already has high blood pressure and they do a tax all, right? Like, oh, this is this is not going to be good, you know, especially when we've seen people ignore our advice of spending two weeks to get themselves ready and get, get their blood pressure under control before they go into this. And we've seen, you know, stuff hit the fan when it these weren't in place and we've seen it go really well when these things were in place. So it's um, it's not just me. This is a bunch of experts that do this for a living professionally, full time. Uh, at least in my case, I've been exposed to them since 2011. So we've been emailing each other back and forth on this you know, private listserv. Hey, I tried this. This didn't work. This worked okay. What do you guys got? And people chime in because it's this whole community of clinicians. So this is basically the amalgamation of 12 years of expert of your expertise across dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of years from each of those individual leaders. So you really are standing, as you said, on the shoulders of giants to, to build, help us build the strategy builder. Yeah, I mean, so look at you know, Dwight McKee, right? He's an oncologist, one of the teachers of the program. Like he's retired now, but he, you know, he has 30 plus years experience doing this stuff as an integrative oncologist. Donnie Yan, same thing, 25 plus years. Just those two. I mean, you got guys like Jim Roach. I mean, all three of these people are published authors, right? Jim Roach, he's probably got 20, 25 years in. He's published two books. He's been doing that. And we're all on this listserv of emails to say, hey, you know, we put this protocol in place. It's working pretty well, but like we still have these issues. And then, you know, Dwight McKee, the oncologist, will chime in. Donnie Yance, the herbalist, will chime in. I might chime in and say, hey, try this Chinese herbal thing. And then they like, oh, yeah, that really worked. But, you know, send me some more of that stuff, Oscar. And so I have these relationships with doctors, naturopaths, acupuncturists, herbalists all over the country since 2011 that I'm compounding a little salve that I'm pretty good at making that no one else makes. And then there's some other, you know, clinician out in Oregon or California that's really good at this propolis thing that, you know, he or she makes. And, you know, we send it to each other back and forth. Or he's like, oh, yeah, I got it from these guys. It's the best stuff. And if you can't get... um a chinchona bark from these it's kind of other companies but you can't from this company or you know whatever so we've we've been putting our heads together on life and death cases for a long time now so i don't know how many years i'm not very good at math but if you just simply put you know donnie's years dwight mckee's years jim roach's years my years you know nalini chilkoff's years uh together i mean that's a that's over 120 years i'm sure of badasses doing this for a full-time living, seeing people die, seeing people lived and seeing what worked and what didn't. And that's where the strategy builder came from. That's that's the knowledge base. So instead of the Illuminati, I'm going to start calling this group the health Illuminati, because that's exactly what this is, is the health Illuminati of bringing together all these different types of, of learning and healers and experts into one place. And that's really was the breeding ground of what we brought to you today. So you are getting the experience of hundreds and hundreds of years of expertise as we pull these resources together. But this it wasn't just Oscar and his network that's reviewed this data. We also went out and did a survey with healers of all sorts to ask them specifically what their healing approach could heal or help to heal from a side effect perspective. So we, we've collected data from a number of different experts in the field around the globe. So it's not just folks in the US, it's folks from around the world who have begun to impact our strategy builder. But we would say this as well, we know it's not complete. We know there's other things out there that might be helpful. Perhaps it's doing, you know, t t uh, eat, drinking some honey within some salt, within some, you know, yogurt that does X or something like that. So you may have a tip or trick and you'll see, we ask you as you're going through our strategy builder to share your tips and tricks because you may know something or have heard of something. And we'd love to make sure we can benchmark th these experiences and share them with others. So when you submit those to us, we'll go out and look for research or expertise to back those things up. And as we can, we'll be adding those to the strategy builder as well, because it's really important to us to make sure this is an ever flowing evolution of patient benchmarking experience so that we can truly help each other make sure we've made side effects optional. This isn't us saying X plus Y equals Z. This is us saying these are options you can use to begin to heal or prepare for your body to armor up for treatment.
Sorry, these I- are great. These are great options that you can use. But there, you know, some someone might invent a better chapstick next week. You know, made out of you know fairy dust and propolis. That's even better than the ones that we've been using for a couple of years. So you know, this is a, a collaborative, amalgamative, you know, hive mind wisdom project that is ever evolving. That's that's what we're doing. This is all part of the nonprofit we've started called Mojo Health Information. And this nonprofit really exists to educate and empower newly diagnosed patients to understand the options they have to deploy across the healing strategy. So we've taken everything we know and all the people we know and all the advantages that we've had in order to build this tool. But just having this tool alone is not enough. So Oscar, you've had many, many patients come to you and you've given them tons and tons of advice. But what is the difference between the people who take that advice and execute it and doesn't? So let's talk a little bit about what the ex- expectations of the patient are once they've actually built the strategy on the strategy builder. Yeah, drive, determination, education, willingness to to do the work, and you know, just you know, who does it? You know, and and then if they if they're, for example. As you say, as a, as your profession, you, you know some of these things are developable. Some of these things are not developable, right? So, like my initiative around going to the gym and building my muscles is not great. It probably never will be. However, I can develop behavioral changes and interventions around, like, hey, if I go to a class where they're playing really cool music, and maybe we're doing some weights and some yoga, and you know, there's other cool people I get to socialize with, I sign up for that every day. So, you know, the 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 difference is not just people who will do it, but who know themselves well enough to know how to get themselves to do it. And that's also why and how we're there for people with the Sherpas, which we're going to launch, is to help, you know, we, we can tell the, the strategy builder will tell you what to do, but knowing yourself and your pros and cons and your strengths and weaknesses and developing, you know, you can speak to this as well, because you happen to be a huge success story, largely due to your drive, determination, and, you know, you're just going to grit your teeth and be like, let's do this. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care what it tastes like. You know, I'll get up. I'll do the work. I'll, you, you, I saw your little gym set up in your basement. You know, you just like, okay, let's do this. And you evidently don't need someone yelling at you or 10 other people pulling those bands to do the work like I do. Like, I'm just not going to go down in my basement and pull bands and do, you know, jack. I need, I need someone cracking a whip. So... But I know that about myself, right? <laughs> yeah. Enter Julie Stevens. That's <laughs> what I'm here to do. Oh, but okay. So let's talk a little bit about this because this does take some sales strategy. And I think that's the other part of my, my background that I'm bringing to bear in this. Let me be clear. My oncologist and the nutritionist in his office and the nurses in his office told me, ah, we, we wouldn't, we don't, we don't understand herbs. We don't, we wouldn't do that. We would be very careful here. You don't really need it. You don't have to worry about your diet. Like, they know what they know and we can't fault them. We can only hold our healers accountable for the education they received and the data they have access to. And there is not sufficient data looking at herbs. And when you understand why, because it's very easy to grow herbs, it's very hard to get a patent on herbs. It's very hard to make it where you can make a ton of money on herbs. It's just not that profitable. So there's not the research out there that exists. So one thing I'm going to say to you is, People are going to say, hey, no, don't do that. Or we're not sure about this. Challenge those statements. That is your job to advocate and be your own champion. So what would I do? I would say, okay, great. So you think that this isn't a great thing to take in combination. What evidence or research do you have to share with me that would back up that statement? Never once when they said something like that, did they have a lick of evidence to back up the statement? then you know you're trudging in an area of an area where they don't know. And this is, I mean, I had wonderful relationships with my nurse practitioner. I love Meredith. And she would just straight up tell me, I don't know. Or when I went to my my doctor after I challenged a few times, he would just say, I don't know. And that is the appropriate answer if they don't know. So make sure you challenge that and let them know. It's okay for you to say this isn't an area that I'm not comfortable with. But it is something that you're going to have to challenge assumptions around because people are going to say, oh, no, 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 don't do that out of fear. But we know when you eat antioxidants or when you introduce certain things like magnesium or vitamin D to your body, it increases your vitality and mojo no matter what drug you're taking. So there are certain uh, parts of what we're sharing that are, are, are valid health predictors at any given point. 
But Oscar, I would say on top of what you shared, which is that initiative and drive, it, there really is a negotiation component and kind of cutting through the BS and deciding what you're willing to listen to. There is no holistic data set to prove what heals cancer. It does not exist where it takes Western and traditional science and herbs and healers and looks at everything to say, this is the best tools to use. It does not exist yet. And it's really important to understand this. So that choreography that you as the conductor are going to have to bring together is something that is your job and your job alone. Oscar, what else would you share? So besides your drive and tenacity, I would say tenacity because, you know, I will frequently say, hey, I can't run this test. Like, you know, serum hurts you new. It's not on my menu. You must get your oncologist, your general practitioner, your podiatrist, your gynecologist, your your psych. I don't care who, but someone's got to run this test. And, you know, the, the first person they go see is their oncologist. And their oncologist is like, well, I've never heard of that. We don't usually do that. You or the patient need to have the tenacity to say, well, okay, I appreciate that, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to run the test. That's cute that you don't usually run it, but I want this run and I'm in charge. And so here's a cookie or a homemade gluten-free brownie or whatever it is that you got to do to get these doctors to get the data. And you called how many times in a row? So I would say like 20 times in a row to get this simple test done through a, a tiny little company called LabCorp. I mean, so it's, it's, I know it's difficult as a cancer patient to have the energy and tenacity drive initiative and uh, gumption to challenge assumptions, challenge doctors, challenge the status quo, challenge the, the sad standard of care, but that's just your job. I'm sorry. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, I might as well complain about having to pay for car insurance as an adult. I'm sorry. That's just part of an adult. You got to buck up and pay for the damn car insurance, you know, or pay someone else to do it. And these, these patient advocates do exist out there, but either the patient does it, their mom and dad, their brother, sister, you know, neighbor or patient advocate, but someone has to fight tenaciously to get these things done and just not take no for an answer. I think that's a really important part that I think you're going to mention. And that is there are people that, that there are times where you're going to have to replace your oncologist. There are times where you're going to have to sub in a new team member. And some of those times we've talked about in past podcasts, but we'll just quickly do a, a refresher for you. If they're not willing to pull your data, if they're not willing to collaborate with others, if they're not willing to think outside the box, if they're not willing to listen to you and understand your unique needs. It's time to find a new doctor. So if you're in this situation where you really want to build a holistic strategy and your doctor is simply unwilling to consider it, explore finding a second opinion. Explore finding someone who is willing to consider things outside the box. Because the standard of care was built to reduce cancer burden. That means to reduce the amount of cancer cells in your body, not so you live a long and happy life after cancer diagnosis. Yeah, that you all deserve better. It's like a bad boyfriend or girlfriend. It's like, well, you know, he helps him pay the rent and he's occasionally remembers my birthday. It's like, no, like you deserve someone that always remembers your birthday and that really, you know, wants to make out with you all the time. Like you deserve better just because this oncologist is kind of sort of barely doing the standard of care job. Doesn't mean that you just, that that's what you deserve. There's more fish in the sea. And I, I do, I do just want to say like, my oncologist now, and actually the last two oncologists were very willing to work in a collaborative environment. They were very willing to pull the data I wanted them to pull. They were very, very willing to consider the supplements I was using. So you can find a doctor that's willing to, to build this strategy. You can find someone who's curious. You just have to keep knocking on doors. So don't be afraid. They live out there. These unicorns exist. I found two in, in the Atlanta area. So I know there must be more out there. Oscar, any parting words of or anything else you'd share on how we came to build this strategy builder or how people can use it or advice on how to really leverage it and make the most of it. Uh, just reiteration that it's ever evolving. We're, we're happy to listen to you. The pay, this is a, a for the patients, by the patients. This is not profit over people. This is people over profit. You know, um, let us know, you know, we're we're all about evolving this thing. And if there's something that, that some special chapter that, that you found or or a zinc supplement that works even better than the ones that we know about, hey, I mean, I've I've got a pretty extensive network of people that have tried all kinds of stuff. Um, but we're 
we ourselves are open because, you know, we don't want to be exactly what we're telling you not to, you know, we're willing to listen. So we're, we're sitting here telling people that you should have an oncologist that's willing to listen. Well, we're willing to listen to you. For sure. And all of this is outside of the knowledge and information you get from your oncologist, but also the energetic connection you've got to feel and heal. So finding your flow that that is that is core and center and joy and living in gratitude. So it's not just taking supplements. It's not just having the right healers. It's not just doing the the, the walking or drinking the tea or things like that. It is truly also finding your flow, maximizing joy, and being the best person you can. So so it is bigger than what we're sharing in the strategy builder, but the strategy builder is going to be a, a lot of the different puzzle pieces that were so hard and would have taken you so many months in the past. Yeah. And and I would highly recommend to not just do the strategy builder, you know, work with a person that can customize the dosing and maybe find, you know, this is the best supplement, but it's in a pill and you don't swallow pills very well. So let me you know, substitute this other one that may not be on the strategy builder. That's a liquid, you know, because they know about this kind of stuff. So they can really fine tune these things. And it's a baseline starting point that then, you know, someone that's really knowledgeable as a clinician uh, can help you guys really fine tune. And that's, that's worth, that's worth a whole lot. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't say more. This is truly just the tip of the iceberg to make it, make it approachable for anyone across the globe to understand some options to heal. But I can't say enough. I wanted someone to look at my specific data and help dial it in for my specific body and my specific cancer and my specific environment. And I think that's worthy of your investment of time. So, so couldn't say that more that this is just the beginning, but we know that this beginning is going to help you live a much better life and frankly, make cancer suck less. So Oscar, from my heart to to yours, I just want to say thank you for saving my life. Thank you for teaching me what I needed to know in order to really help, um, you know, empower myself and educate myself and give me the research where I was data confident and willing to challenge assumptions and be the person that would break the boundaries. And I'm so grateful that together we can partner to bring this to, to, to reality. Julie, you're welcome. And thank you for getting me out of my little shell of, you know, Sandy Springs, Georgia and part of something bigger that's going to change the world. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what we can do. So to all of our listeners, thank you so much for for dialing or for listening in. We are so excited that this is going to launch in the coming weeks. It's going to be launching on January 25th. And may all of you live long and lucky. From all of us, we hope you enjoyed these knowledge bombs we've dropped on you today. And we will certainly look forward to having you tune in to the next episode. Please rate us five stars and share us with your friends. As always, We hope your mojo's rides in. Peace.